to YouTube. So it should be on YouTube shortly. Assalamualaikum Dr. Nuriana, apa khabar? Bukan salam bro. <laughs> Sibuk lah. Alhamdulillah, oh, ke, ke tiga hari ni kalau nanti sirim nak mai. Tak apa, tak apa. Alhamdulillah, bro sihat tak? Okay, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, sama lah. Kita tengah nak prepare soalan exam, semua kan? I know, I know. Hmm. But you're still active, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. Uh, uh, that's how I make myself. Uh, that's how you roll. <laughs> yeah. That energizes me. <laughs> inspiring. Yeah. Inspiring for aspiring academics. Definitely. Thank uh, you, Nelson. You here. Okay. Yes, yes. Nelson, the yes, Nelson. Nelson. Is it? Is it? Uh, no, I'm from Wrexham. Oh, this one Nelson from Wrexham. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, we have because we have Nelson also uh, in our school of physics. Okay, there yeah. are too many Nelsons around, yeah. Ah, uh, <laughs> it will start shortly. Yeah, in four minutes time at three. Uh, yeah, we will start sure. time. So, doesn't matter how many we have. Uh, we we have a few also on YouTube. Because this okay. uh, session, this session will be available uh, on YouTube after the live session. So those who cannot make it, they can still watch the recorded the record recorded version. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because um, how, how do you get to know this? I, I think I shared information with one. Uh, I don't know. One of the Bao Bao Wani. Me, Wani, yeah. Ah, ya yeah, betul Bawani. Ah, okay, uh, okay. from Dok. So, Bawani Shek. Bawani ke? Ah, uh, no no, Miss Bawani. Yeah, she's a oh, program yes. coordinator. Ah, okay okay. So it's good to see But some. But I think probably Doctor Min, uh, Doctor Wan Azmin might be your, uh, your uh, might know you or something. Maybe she was the one who approached you. The one who approached me was. Oh yeah, yeah. Before Puan Bawa, ah, uh, Cik Bawa ni, apa ni? Miss Bawa ni, ni apa tu? Doctor Wan, ya. Wan lah. Doctor Wan Azmin. Azmin, um, uh, Fazli Jan, Fazli, Fazli Jan, Fazli Jan. Fazli Jan. Eh? Oh, no, I'm not sure. I'm quite new. I have. Don't oh, Fazli Jan. Yeah, She's I just a... joined Rexham like in August. Oh, okay. Still very new. Yeah. <laughs> Because uh, I I've conducted a few program with Exam last time, so all right this time yeah. So after a few years, uh, yeah. yes, I think you are going to conduct on another one on the eleven and eighteen or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Will you be? Ah uh, yes, hopefully. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dr. Izzal, how are you? Alhamdulillah, Prof. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Always looking forward. <laughs> oh, my webcam is not on yet. Okay. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay.
Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat sejahtera dan uh, hello semua. Uh, apa khabar? Terima kasih kerana dapat uh, join our webinar this afternoon. Uh, this uh, our uh, webinar series organized uh, by Center for Development of Academic Excellence Pusat Pembangunan Kemulangan Akademik. University Science Malaysia. So today we have uh, with me today is uh, Dr. Teh Sin Yin, uh, our speaker this afternoon, Dr. Teh. So nanti Dr. Teh, you will uh, please introduce yourself nanti ya, yeah? when you when you apa ni, when you start nanti. Tapi Dr. Teh, Dr. Teh Sin Yin is um, a senior uh, lecturer from School of Management ya. Yeah? Pusat Pengajian Pengurusan uh, University Science uh, Malaysia and uh, she's very active actually in uh, conducting training also uh, because I saw recently she conducted uh, training on business analytics or something. explain uh, So today our, our webinar is um, about using jigsaw. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Jigsaw uh, because Jigsaw is one of the popular uh, method that we use uh, in the face-to-face, -face, especially in the face-to-face -face, uh, classroom to engage students. It's a very effective way to engage students, every student, everyone in the class uh, using uh, Jigsaw method. And uh, I, I find Jigsaw is very useful, especially if you want to, you know, so-called cover a big topic, but instead of we cover the topic using the normal kind of conventional uh, teaching-centered uh, approach, but Jigsaw allows us to design it in such a way that every student will be engaged, will, you know, uh, in the in the activity, and everyone has to really contribute as part of the uh, group uh, activity. So Dr. Tay will explain um, basically the, the general principles and concept of Jigsaw. But our focus today is how do we do Jigsaw? How do we design and implement Jigsaw in an online environment? Because uh, in a face-to-face -face situation, those who are, who are familiar with Jigsaw, you know very well, is uh, it's not it's easy, it's uh, time consuming also to prepare, especially for the first time. But uh, it is quite, uh, it is more straightforward when you, do, when you do it in the classroom. But in the online environment, it's different story. It's different story. Uh, but I personally, I feel very strongly that we should try to use Jigsaw also, uh, if not for all topics, but at least for one or two topics in, in the course, because to me it's very engaging, uh, but it's not straightforward. So today, Dr. T will be sharing with us how she actually designed and implement uh, Jigsaw in her own online class. And then after that, I'll be sharing also some of my uh, limited experience in doing Jigsaw uh, online. So that's so our program this afternoon. Um, before I pass over to Dr. Teh, I forgot to welcome all of you, I think just now. So uh, welcome to all the participants this afternoon to our webinar. And um, uh, yeah, basically, uh, let's let's learn more about uh, Jigsaw. So now I can pass over to Dr. Teh. Don't forget to introduce yourself like, briefly, Dr. Teh. Okay. <laughs> you, you can you can share your your screen now. Okay. Thanks. All right. Okay. 
Let me adjust a bit. Yeah, you can see the slides. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, first of all, thank you very much, Prof Karim and CDAE for the invitation. I'm actually not the expert for Zigsaw. I'm just uh, the user and also the practitioner for it. It just happened that I use this online Zigsaw in my class. So I'm Tessin Ying, I'm from School of Management, and uh, I'm just going to share how I use the online Zigsaw in my uh, classes. So uh, I have involved in the training for business analytics. I have also used this online Zigsaw in some of my workshops as well. Uh, maybe not the full version sometime, but I also use part of it. And also the we have the reverse Zigsaw. Later on, I will show you uh, the reverse Zigsaw as well beside the online Zigsaw. So now uh, I will just walk you through how to design an online Zigsaw to engage every learner in our lesson. So last two weeks, Prof Karim has shared with us what are the simulation of online Zigsaw. So uh, majority of us here maybe may, um, have not go through the session. So I will just quickly touch on the overview of the Zigsaw technique. Then I will show step by step how to design the online Zigsaw using WebEx. So I'm using the WebEx platform to do my online classes. And then how to design online reverse Zigsaw. So Zigsaw is actually, when I do this, I found out that there are many versions of Zigsaw. We, I can actually see Zigsaw 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So I only touch on the ones that I'm using, which is the online Zigsaw and the reverse Zigsaw. After that, followed by the conclusion. So the most simple or easier way to say what is Zigsaw, it is actually a cooperative learning technique. So instead of we tell the student what to do, they may just forget about it after the lesson. So if we show them how to do it, they may uh, they may say, okay, uh, I will just follow your demonstration. But maybe I, I maybe remember, but if you involve me, then I will learn it. That's why we want to involve our learner in this jigsaw, uh, through this jigsaw technique. Okay, so because in this jigsaw technique, they have to do it themselves so that they will learn the topic and they will do the sharing with their peer. So their peer is actually like a peer learning as well. So this is the uh, diagram that Prof Karim used it last two weeks to explain what is the uh, how, how to see the overview of the jigsaw technique. So we can see from here, it's actually just three simple steps here. In the step one, the student meet in the home group. So we have the student, we group them into the original group, we call it home group. So let's say we have five group of students. So total, let's say you have 25 students in your class, you can group them into five groups. So uh, the optimal size, I, I look at what people do from the practice, they usually do about five to six participants. So it may not be suitable if it's too big, uh, big size. But for my, uh, how to say, not on my classes, the normal classes, when I have big classes, sometimes I have to do more than five students as well. Okay, I will tell you how, how I do it later. So for this home group, they will get the different segment of the question from, uh, from the lecturer, from the facilitators. And each of these number one, they will get the same topic. So we will put all these number one into the expert group one. And then the number two, they get another same topic. So the two, topic number two, they will group, group together in the expert group two. So the same happens for number three, four, and five. So let's say if you have uh, five topics in, in your syllables, or maybe you have many topics, but you try to break them into five subtopics so that you can let the five groups of the expert to study them and to discuss about them in their expert group. And then after that, the student return to their home group to teach each other. So just now, from the home group, we have five different students. So these five different students, each of them learn different segments. So when they come back later, 
they will share with their peer. So maybe like each of them present five to 10 minutes to their group. So five students will learn five different segments from their group members. So this is how the overdraw jigsaw technique works. So the main thing here is we have home group and expert group. So expert group is the place that they learn the topics. Okay, so if you try to visualize it this way, this is how I do it in my class. So let's say I have 25 students. I break them into five, uh, five members in a group, in the home group. And I put them into five members in the home group. And then I break out. So each group will send one members to each of the expert group to learn different topics. So this one, we break them out. And after they do the learning, they will go back to their home group to share their knowledge. So they go back to their original home group and they share the information with their group members. Okay, so I do a little bit of uh, modifications here. So for my scenario, at the end of the classes, because just now I say when they back from the expert group to their home group, they will present to their uh, group members. The sharing is through presentation. Okay, so what I did is at the end of this uh, stage, I add another one stage. So one representative from each of the home group will present the segment to the entire classes. Why I do this? The reason is because if I stop at this stage, so they are learning from their peer. So let's say if they are, uh, if their friend, one of the friend, uh, how to say, uh, is in equip, does not really learn the topic deeply, when he bring back the topic and discuss with the group member, maybe the rest may not able to learn uh, a comprehensive on the particular topic. So when they present, when, when I do this presentation to the entire classes, I can do the debriefing at the same time. So when they present, if there's some um, misunderstood about the concept, then I can actually correct them at this stage. So that's why I add another one layer here before they actually uh, do the assessment. So after this stage, we need to have one assessment, like a quiz for the whole uh, entire classes. Why? Because we need to make sure that they learn the correct concept. I think there are somebody type in the chat box, right? Let me see. Is there some question there? Kind of challenging to cover the course's content than being in a big group and online. Okay, yeah. It depends how big is big also. So I'm for, for my class, I will tell you later, I actually do it for 45 students in my class. Okay, so this is the 10 step used for the Zigsaw method. It's not developed by, by me. This one is already established because Zigsaw is, a, uh, how to say, is already a established method. So the I will walk you through step by step later using this uh, framework. So first is to divide the student into five person home group. So as I mentioned, some, some they divide into six person is okay. So if six person, then you have to segment your topic into six segments or six topics, okay? Then you appoint one student from each group as the leader, okay? After that, divide the day's lesson into five or to six segments. So it depends on how many person you have in your group later. So uh, usually one week we cover one chapter. So one chapter, we need to divide them into five segments and then assign each student to learn one segment because in each group, we have five students. So each of them will learn a different segment. Okay, And then give student time to read over their segment. So before start, they have to read and understand about the topics that they, they are going to discuss and share. Okay, then form temporary expert group. So we form from the home group, we will uh, form the expert group and bring them to the expert group. 
After that, bring the student back into their home group. So when they back to their home group, they have to present their segment to their home group members. So what is the facilitator, uh, facilitator role here? The facilitator has to float from group to group, observing the whole process. Okay, because in the online session, we need to break the participants into uh into groups. So you can we can do that using the breakout session in the WebEx. So I will show you how to do it step by step later. And at the end of the session, give a quiz on the materials that we learn. Okay, so before we do the uh, do the online using WebEx, we need to do the setup first. So we have to enable the backup uh, breakout session in the WebEx. So when you schedule a meeting, we have to go to this show at once option because if we does not do this step later on when you launch your meeting, then you cannot do the uh, breakout already. It, it has to be preset before you start the meeting, okay? So when you go to this schedule a meeting, after you in insert your topic, automatically you will have the password, then you click show at once option. So once you click show at once option, there will be three things here, audio, agenda, and scheduling option. So click on the scheduling option, and it will bring us to a long options given here. So from this option, we will see one of it is called breakout session. You have to make sure this is ticked. By default, it's unticked. So we have to tick to enable breakout session. Because during my first session also, I, I thought that is by default is breakout session enabled. So I, I trying to do breakout, but I couldn't make it because is not enabled. Okay, so when the meeting already started, I cannot edit it. So I have to do it before the meeting start. Yes, Zoom can be used. Let me see, there are some questions here. I tried to use Zoom before. Zoom can be used as well. Can we use other platforms like Zoom? Uh, Microsoft Team, I have not tried, but Zoom, yes, I already tried on Zoom. So let's walk through step by step. So I will demo to you, uh, I will show you how I do it step by step. So first step, divide the student into five person home group. So how I do this is I request the student to insert the home group number as the prefix to their Webex name, Webex username. So if you look at here, each of the student here, in front of them, there's a number. So that is actually the number for their original home group. Okay, why I do this, uh, you, I will let you know in a short while because it will uh, make the breakout session faster. Okay. So step number two, uh, the student will know how to do it. Actually, they can edit their name. It's just like how you uh, change your name for example, like my name, I change this at 10 S Y I N. So when you edit your name there, you just add another number in front of it. So as a user, they just need to click on the three dot at the bottom there. They can actually change it. Okay. So step number two, appoint one student from each group as the leader. So for my class, I have the I use this master of business analytics student. Okay, so I do it for my Master of Business Analytics student. So they are new batch of students because of this COVID, they never meet one and another. So they don't know uh, their classmate in the class. So what you can do is actually we can use the uh, Google Sheet. Google Sheet, you just put the group name, group number, group leader, and group members, and so on. So let them fill up their name. So after they fill out, they see which group have not full, then they can actually put in their own name there. So if you use this way, at least those, they don't know their group classmate, they still can register into the uh, register as a team. 
Then later on, they can decide who become the group leader and they can give the name to their group, uh, uh, to, to their own group. So from here, I will take this group number as their group, home group number. So they actually put this number in front of their name as a prefix. Okay. Okay. So number three, divide the day's lesson into five to six segments. So what I did here is before the uh, before we go into the zigzag activities, what I will do is for every week, first of all, I will discuss the important summary point for the chapter. So let's say this week, I'm discussing about chapter seven. So before my class, usually uh, uh, for all my classes, I will do pre-recorded pre video. This class, I actually co-teach with my colleague. So my colleague, Dr. Sharon, she will pre-record all the video for these chapters and upload to e-learning portal. So when I do the live session, I just discuss the summary of the important point with the class. Okay, so if you look at this chapter seven, I only have three main points that I discuss for the whole chapter, the three main points that I discuss with the, uh, with the student. And then from these three main points, the most important part is actually this part. So from here, I pick the most important topic, then I plan my zigzag activity based on this topic. Because for this course, uh, for this chapter about forecasting, the most important things or skill that they need to learn is to select appropriate time series based forecasting method. So before they do the forecasting method, they have to know how to choose or select the most suitable methods. So this is what I want them to know. So when I design my zigzag activity, I based on this student topic. If you don't want to do this, you can also do for everything. But if you do for everything, it might be very time consuming. So bear in mind that for online courses, it may not be a very long session. So we need to be, uh, how to say, more uh, planned accordingly. So for some chapters, I will able to do the jigsaw activity for the whole topic. I will show you one example later. So for this one, I only choose one most important topic and I focus on these topics. So for this chosen topic, I will try uh, I will create or prepare five segments. So these five segments that I created, of course, you can straightforward start, go to the Google uh, Google, X, uh, Google Sheet and start to create. But my, my own practice is I usually will do it in the Microsoft Excel first. So from the Microsoft Excel, I create into five different shapes. So you, if you look at the bottom part, I have mobile unit sales, track, uh, tractor unit sales, and so on. So I have five different segments here. For each of these segments, I have the data. So when I do the preparation from this data, I need to prepare all the, all the charts. So for each of these, I actually prepare five charts here. Okay, so I give them data and five charts for each of these segments, okay? And then I go to the Google sheet. So what you can do is you can log into your Google and then you click there's one Google sheet there. It's like your Microsoft Excel, okay? Click on this, you will have this empathy page. So what I do is just already do it in the Microsoft Excel. I just copy and paste it here. Okay, so I paste it. I will have page number one until number five here. Okay, it's a bit tricky for this uh, Google sheet. The diagram, I cannot straightforward. When I paste it, it does not appear here. So I need to click one more time, copy and paste it one by one. Then it will be appear there. Okay, let me see. I think somebody typed. There. Yeah, not necessarily do for all topics. You can choose a few topics that you want students to know it, right? Thank you, bro.
Why I choose to use Google Sheet? Because it's useful for this jigsaw activity. It allows collaboration and many or multiple users can edit the file in real time. So when I edit in Sheet 1, let's say my friend can actually do it in Sheet 2 and so on. So for the segment just now, segment 1, I will let them focus on this Sheet 1. Segment two, they will do on, uh, sorry, the uh, expert group. Expert group one, they will focus on the shape one. And then expert group two, they were focusing on shape two. Expert group three, on shape three, and so on. So each of the expert group, they are actually doing on a different uh, segment. So all these five segments, they contain different information. And the good thing is the user can actually insert text or they can put in diagram or even the YouTube link. Okay, so the YouTube link is also can be added there. And facilitator can monitor closely the progress and attend to the slower response group in the breakout session. So when I do this in my class, I actually open this page when they are doing their activity. So I will click here from sheet to sheet, and I will know which groups are hang there. They cannot fill up, they cannot answer, they cannot do discussion there. So I will know. So I will I will not, I don't have to go from group to group. I can see which group is uh, pending there or slow, then I can go and uh, help them. So another advantage is, or benefit, the student can get all the material from other group timely. And you will be surprising that they actually learn from each other. When they do on their own group, they will go and try to sneak and find out what are the others member do in their group. So if they find their way is useful, then they will actually borrow the method and use it for their own uh, section segment. So I will show you the example later. So it's quite interesting because the student not only learn from their own expert group, they also go and see other group and they learn from other expert group as well. Okay, okay so talking about uh, large group just now. So let's say if you have five topics that you want to discuss and you have many group, this one, five group times five students, meaning I can only cover 25 students, right? So in my class, I have 45 students. 45 students, I need to break into nine groups. So what I did is I add another five group here, number six, uh, segment six, segment seven, until segment nine. I add until segment 10 so that it will cover these five segments. So I repeat this same thing, segment one until five. I repeat for segment six until 10. Okay, so I duplicate this. I repeat for segment six until 10. So there will be two expert group that learning on the same topic. Okay, so this is how you can handle for big groups or biggest group. Okay, so step number four, assign each student to learn one segment. So how can the student access to this? When we set up the Google Sheet, you have to make sure you click here just now. Let me go back. So on top of the right side, after you copy paste everything here, prepare in the five different shapes, go to the top right hand side, you will see a green color share button. Click on the share button and you will see this pop up. Okay, so one important thing is we must change this. Get the link for every one with the link, and then by default, this is viewer. If we use viewer, student can only see it. They cannot edit anything inside the Google Sheet. So what we have to do is we have to change it to editor. Editor means everyone with this link, they can edit the Google Sheet at the same time simultaneously, and it's actually lifetime, uh, uh, real time, okay? so. After click editor, then you click on this copy link. Then share this link with the student. So we are using Webex, so you can just paste it in the Webex chat box. Then the student will able to access to it. Okay, so each of the student, 
they will they will go to their own let's say if they are assigned to the segment one they will go and uh, refer to their segment one information so segment two they will refer to the segment two information let me see there are some questions out there can we have two students in one expert group instead of having two same expert group ah uh, yes you can do that as well then you will have 10 students in the same group okay so if you have a big group you want to do it that way also can i do it uh one to nine group uh how to say i do it repeated two group is because when i design this i follow their assignment group so it's easier for them to know their own group members as well so if you want to do it this way it's also okay for my uh not online courses the normal courses i actually do like dr nawa said I put two students in one expert group. Why I do it this way is because when we put one student to one expert group, some of the students, they are not confident. So when they go back to their home group, they're not able to deliver the information to their peer because they feel that maybe I'm not too sure whether the sound I hear it correctly or not. So if you send two students, then they can discuss among themselves when they present to their peer so they can discuss the answers uh the the information that they are not too sure they can discuss among themselves so that is the benefit of it okay you're welcome all right so i give them the information together with the uh, case study because i use case study for them to learn the topic so i give this case study together with the data just now so the data just now is actually explaining about this case study they need to use the data information to do some prediction okay then form temporary expert group so just now they were in their home group so how to form this temporary uh, expert group that is how uh, that is why we need to use the WebEx breakout session. So after you do uh, edit the WebEx setting just now, you will see this blue color part, this part, the breakout session come out in your WebEx. If you skip the step just now, not enable the breakout session, this button will not come out. Even if you click more also, you will not find this button. So make sure you enable your breakout session so that you can do this. So when you click on this, there will be a pop up uh, image breakout session assignment. So I have 45 participants. One of them may be the, the line not good. So it becomes 44. So actually I have 45 students. So I want to manually break them into nine sessions. So I will type nine here. So if you do not choose manually, you put automatically, the student will be randomly assigned to the expert group. I don't want this to happen because if I randomly assign them, later on when they go back to their home group, maybe the same, uh, the, we have five students in the home group, right? Maybe two or three students will learn the same topic. That's why I don't want it to uh, auto automatically assign. I do it manually. Let me see, there are some checks. Different link to different group. Uh, no, this is the benefit of it. I only give one link. The benefit of using the... Let me see, what is that? Your question is, during class, you give different link to different home group. Uh, no, only one, only one link. Because the benefit of using the Google Sheet is, all of them can assess the same link and they have the different information on the different page of the sheet. So just now you see the same link they assess, but they will go to hear different different uh, expert groups. So expert group one, they will click on this. Expert, two group, uh, expert group two, they will click on this. Okay, so the same link. The, so we, it saves our time. We don't need to create many links. Okay, so for this breakout session, I will show you how I do it. It can be done very, very quickly manually. Okay, so this is actually a video clip. Let me play the video.
Okay, so what I did here is I choose one person from each group because I already have the number, so I can choose very quickly. So now I already do until breakout session three. I have five members in the first breakout session, five members in the second. I'm doing the third one. Now I'm doing the fourth one. So I choose one member from group one, one member from group two. I miss out two, three, four, and five. So I assign them to the fourth group here. Okay, then the fifth expert group. Then I move to the session. So it can be done just within a few uh, seconds. So it's very fast. So some of the students, if they have not joined, also no problem. After you do this, then you just add them because if they join late, it will come in here. Then you can easily enter them into the breakout session. So I do this and then I will do for six, seven, eight, nine. And then uh, I, I repeat six, seven, eight, nine for, for expert group six. And then six, seven, eight, nine again for expert group uh, seven and so on. Okay. So this is how we do it. That's why the numbering part, the prefix part is very, very useful. So you can use it when you want to break them into the expert group. And you can use it when you want to bring them back to the home group. Okay. So this one is we separate them into expert group. So each group will have different member or one representative to join the expert group. I have to do this recording because uh, this is record what you can see behind the screen. If I do it in WebEx, you will not be able to see this behind the screen. So you can uh, see at the same time. Yeah. Dr. K, Dr. K. Yeah. Uh, can yeah. I just interject? If, if you can yeah, go back sure. to the video, you can okay. go back to the video. Yeah, just now. Um, currently in WebEx, uh, we we the lecturer has to do all the assignment of the students into the expert group, right? Um, but in future, in the future, I, I was told that WebEx would allow students also to to create their own group or to put themselves into the predefined group that we have created for them. Uh, but yes. currently, they, they cannot do that. But in, they are working on that. Mm, good. Yeah, if they can do that, then it could be even faster. But this one is also yeah, quite faster. Right? Mm. Yeah. Okay. I, I will let you know another uh, another tips at the end of the session. I will share with the participants uh, another faster way to do it. Okay. All right. Okay. I think there are some question in the chat box let me see ah pre-assign the breakout session so since you already asked me so there's a, actually one approach that you can do the uh, pre-assign to the breakout session is to host a session so instead of host a meeting just now if you see i'm actually host a meeting for my classes what you can do is you can host a session and then you schedule a training so if you do it that way every week you will have the same student pre-assigned to your breakout session. So one of the things is if you do it this way, each of your students, they have to register an WebEx account. So if you do it like what I do the normal way, they don't have to register an account. They can just click the link that I give them. They, then they can join the WebEx session already. Okay. So, so far I haven't do that is because I have to make sure every student register their account so that their name is appeared there. Then you can, you can be assigned into the breakout session. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Dr. Yes. Dr. I, I discovered uh, recently in WebEx, um, uh -huh. we can appoint, let's say for, for the five groups, we have the group leader, right? Uh -huh. uh, so we, we can, uh, Appoint the group leader as a co-host, uh, okay. so the co-host can create the group. Uh, they can assign students uh, in, in the group. So if we appoint the group leader as the co-host, then mm. the, the group leader can can assign their members into their group. So that's probably oh. another way of doing it. Lah. Okay, good tips. So let's say uh, I have five group leaders. So I just give my five group leader as a co-host so they can yes. assign the members, all right? Okay, yeah. another another alternative way for us. Good. Just discover. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> 
I, I also discover another one is we can pre pre assign breakout session if they are USM lecturer or staff because all of our account account info uh, our email information already there. So if they are staff of USM, then we can pre uh, pre assign the breakout session. So let's say if we do training for the staff, then we can use that function. Okay. Uh, what where am I now? Okay. So after that, the student will assess the Google form and they join their expert group. So you can see here the different different uh, icon here is actually the student. So they have different students. So you can see the boxes there. So different students, they will have different color. So you see this all different color here. Actually, different students, they assess to this page simultaneously. Okay, So that's why you have this. So just now, as I mentioned to you, I only give them the data. So this is my group segment one. I just give them the data and also the five uh, diagram. And I ask them to select the suitable forecasting method. So you will see some of them. Just now, I show this in my summary. So some of them copy paste this inside this Google Sheet. And then they select the ones that the suitable model. They just use this method to highlight it. And then they copy paste my slide here. And you see they have creative way. They create, create a box. And then for the five different country, because my trend is actually for five different country. So they show whether they are trend or not, seasonal or not. So it will, you, you, you will find out quite surprising that the student will find their way to learn. We only give them two information. All this information, the group members bring in the information. Okay. Then we can see here the expert group segment two. So I give them this data and also five diagram. Okay, so you see they use a different way to uh, to show their result. They show it in the three different columns. So for each of these diagram, they put it side by side. And then they also paste the information just now. They also put it here and they type it in a different way. So you can see is the student will use their creativity to solve it differently and then maybe some group they already see other group copy paste so they also do the same copy paste so you can see this expert group tree they even copy paste the case study information from the pdf file so this one i share in the pdf file they bring it in so this one i share it in the powerpoint they also bring it in so they know how to bring in all the information together and do their own discussion so sometimes I will see in my class because I already start do this since my second week. So I do it until week seven. So I have did it quite many times already. So students are quite familiar with this platform. Sometimes you will see they put picture here like this one is actually insert as a picture. Sometimes you even see they put the YouTube link there. So some concept they don't understand, they, they Google in the YouTube. Hey, sorry, they find it in the YouTube and they share the video there so their friend can watch it uh, together. Okay. I just saw three, three samples. There are five uh, segments actually. Okay. So it's, uh, uh, at least it's not boring. They can learn from their friends and all their friends will bring in different information into the Google Sheet. Okay. And they actually uh, learn from others' expert group as well. You see the same method they see other people do it, they will do it also. So they learn the positive thing from others expert group as well. Okay. Then after they do the discussion, usually for this process, I will give them 20 minutes. Then I will see if 20 minutes, they still cannot finish because I can observe them from time to time. They cannot finish. I will extend another five minutes. Then if still cannot, then I will extend another five. Usually I don't, uh, I will control not more than 30 minutes for this session. Okay, then after that, bring the student back into their home group. So when you bring them to their home group, you need to start a new breakout session. Because just now, they already went to the expert group. Now they have to back all the one must come together. All the two, member two must come into group two. Member three must back to their home group three and so on. So I find the faster way because if you want to edit one by one, it is very slow. So the faster way I did is I just 
I told the student I will just end the session and then they will join back. So very quickly, just less than a few minutes, I end the session, then they start to join. So if I see there is already participant there, I can start to break manually, break out the session. You don't have to wait until all participants come back because while you are while you are breaking the student into group, they come in, you can actually add them uh, top up later. So no problem. Doesn't matter. You don't have to wait until everyone come in here. So I will show you how I do this breakout session assignment. So I group all the one together, two together, and so on. This is a video. Let me play the video. Okay. So I break into nine sessions. Okay, so I see about 24, 26 students, then I start to create my assignment ready. So you can see the students keep coming in on the top right there. They are joining, no problem. So I have nine sessions. Each of these home groups should have five, uh, five students. So I put you back to your own group. So you can see I put all the three together, all the four together. So for the five group, less than one minute, I can already put them back to their own groups. So at the same time, other group uh, other members may come in. So just now you miss one, you can actually add them again. So no problem. So after you did all, you can come back and add those latecomer into their own group. So I will have breakout session one until number nine. So you see the breakout session two will be all the number two, breakout session three will be all the number three. So this is how they go back to their home group. Okay. Uh, let me see, is there any question there? Uh, Zoom can do pre-assign and student can choose their own group. Uh, for Zoom also, I, I didn't do the pre-assign, I do it uh, on the spot because I found if I do the numbering, it's quite fast. So I don't bother to do it pre-assign. Okay. All right, let me move on. So I already bring back the student into their home group. The next will be ask each of the student to present his or her segment to the home group. So they learn information, learn different information just now. Now they are coming back to their uh, own home group. They have to present it or share the knowledge to their group member. So I show you one of the example, how, how they are doing their sharing in their own group. So you can see, this is what, let me see. This is expert group or home group. Uh, okay, yeah, home group, correct. So this is group number eight. You see all the group number eight members together already. So I go and join their breakout session. Uh, they just need to change their name. So uh, there's one question, not clear how to instruct students to put the prefix numbering. Uh, you just ask them to change their username. So when they put their username, just insert the number in front of their username. Then it will, it will be there ready. The, the students are very technology savvy. You just tell them they will know how to do it quickly. Okay, so I will show how, how so, one of the breakout discussion. So, so next, I think I'm seven. Seven. Um, so You want me to share or you, you want to share yourself? So the first one is uh uh we bring into similar just, just like the the uh the scenario and also uh, this one is a two scene the first one is a season and is a upper friend because uh every until the director will be at a dark time so Okay, so I visit one uh, the group one by one because I have nine breakout session. So this is breakout session number eight. So you can see that there is a session time uh, timing that 
So you can see how, how many minutes they are already there. So for this group, they are already the second or third presenter are presenting their information. So you can see, see they are actually like, uh, don't have to be so serious, but they can share their information uh, and they communicate among themselves. So if I see all the progress are going well, I will not interrupt them. I will just type in the chat box that uh, the progress is okay. So, so that they know I already visited them. So if the group have problem, then I have to interrupt. I have to communicate with them and tell them what's wrong, what's happened, then how to move on and so on. Okay. And then uh, I flip from group to group and observe their process. So just now is group number eight. Now I will show you another group for group number nine. So this is how I join on the right so side. Education, I believe your, your number eight here also same. Maybe yeah. 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 Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I was right or not. <laughs> so, let's see if you suspect their answer is incorrect. You can put your suggested answer beside that so that we can. Because, because I, I put here with, with trend because we are seeing it's a little bit uh, up trend here. It's up trend here. Yeah. So, I put here but number eight, they put here. No trend. I, I, I'm not sure. Okay, no problem. You write the answers that you feel. Uh, if let's say you feel their answer is correct, you can type your answer beside that. Then you put your group number or what to identify that is your answer. <laughs> then later, we will discuss. Yeah, that's why I want you guys to try so that you know maybe by right because now the discussion should get the final answer already. So let's say if you still oh. suspect their answer. So that means something to be wrong. Huh? So that's why we need to come back uh, into the group later, into the class. The whole class oh, yeah, no. I, I, I have to, write, to comment there. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, no problem. They don't know, they don't know which group comment because there is no group to discuss. So no problem. You don't put your group number, you just type your answer there. Oh, this is it. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So you can see from the uh, group discussions that actually just now during the expert group, they should be able to come up with all the things already. But then when they go back to share with their home group, you will find that the home group actually disagree with the information provided by the expert group. So this is the reason why before the assessment, I come out with one more step, ask them to present it to the entire classes so that I can actually advise them which answer, uh, which, how to say, which information is the more accurate information. So you can see they are not learning, uh, they are not just digest the information given to them. They are trying to query the information and they counter uh, how to say counter offer their their information so they are sharing a different information and you can see that they are actually happy and enjoy the sessions you, you you can hear all the laughing behind that because they are talking to their own field and my class because for the master student they are there are some of them are working adult so my classes is six to nine o'clock. You can imagine they're already very tired. If I just talking in front of the screen for three hours, then I'm very, very sure they will be quite boring. So if we do this activity, all of them have a chance to like chit chat or talk to their friends. So they are not feeling boring. So far, I already have seven week classes, uh, amazingly perfect attendance. Although they are working adult, but I have perfect attendance for seven weeks. So I believe they actually enjoy their class. Let me see what is this already. Okay, so this is how I stop. The, sorry. So this is how I end the breakout session. So as a facilitator, I have to monitor the time. 
So because it's not automatically set that how many minutes it will terminate and come back to the uh, come back together. So I have to monitor this breakout session time. So for me, the second uh, sessions that they go back and present to their home group, I give them 15 minutes because I have five members. Each member present five minutes. So five, uh, sorry, each member present three minutes. So try three times five is 15 minutes. This second session, usually I give less time because first session, when they discuss in the expert group, they need more time to find information. So when they come back to the home group, they already have the information. They just want to share the information with their group member. So I give less time for this one. Okay. So uh, for this one, I will show you how to end the breakout session. Usually about 14 minutes, I will stop the session and there will be given one minute for them to wrap, uh, wrap up and they will the system will wait for one minute before come back together. So let me play this video. Okay, so I'm observing this breakout session time. So until 40 minutes, I will end all this breakout session. So that they are one minute for them to uh, wrap up their discussion. Okay, end the session. So you observe here, it start to count down 57, 56 seconds until zero then everyone will come back to the uh to the entire classes meaning that we stop this breakout session for the home group okay i think it's okay we don't have to show until the end okay let me check the check box here try the breakout function it's true that the student prefer to discuss among their peer rather than listening to the lecturer Yes, 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 exactly. They, they are more enjoying that they can talk. Otherwise, you can imagine for the whole semester, they don't even have chance to talk to their classmate. And because they have not, uh, they don't have chance to meet face to face. So it's quite pity them. So at least if we do it this way, they have chance to talk to other members, not when they go to the expert group, they are talking to the members, not in their own group. When they come back to their home group, they can talk to the members in their own assignment group, their project group. Okay. Dr. And you will find yeah. So yes. this question from Dr. Nawal. No, oh, I, I missed one question. Let me yeah, one. you yes. just both that about the prefix, the prefix number. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, just now I already I already answered just now. So when okay. they change a uh, name, when, when they change their username, they can actually edit it. On the bottom right hand side, there are three dot there for the participant. They should be able to change their name there. Okay. All right. So at the end of the session, we are we will give them a quiz on the material. So what I did is uh, similar to Prof Karim, I like to use this Socrative as well. I just give them three questions and then they will answer immediately. Then I will ask them to type their full name here. That's why I, I blur out the information. So we can see from here immediately, we can know, let's say question number one, the 57% of them answer correctly. Question number two, 55% of them answer correctly. And question number three, 83% of them answer correctly. Then we, we know which part they are still weak, uh, weak on it. So what we can do is maybe we can share more information or give some exercises on that particular uh, question that they are not familiar, uh, they are still not very strong on it. Okay, and you can see if we do it this way, everyone in the class will answer the question. So it's quite good because they know they need to answer it later. And how to do this? Yeah, some, some of my colleagues asked me to show how to do this Socrative, how to create this Socrative, uh, Socrative assessment method. So I take this opportunity to show you step by step as well. So you can go to the Socrative website and you enter as a teacher. You can enter as a student or teacher. So if you want to create it, we have to enter it as a teacher and then add quiz, create new. So when you click this create new, 
it will pop up with this choice. So we can change this title of the quiz. Let's say now you are doing quiz on chapter uh, seven or so on. You can edit here. And then what I did just now, I'm actually doing a multiple choice question. You can choose two, true or false, or you can ask them to type short answer. So for me, I use I usually use the multiple choice. Okay, let me see. <laughs> okay. So for example, I type quiz on ABW501 for C7. So just now I'm actually asking them to identify or to select the, uh, to, to check the trend. So which forecasting model is suitable if the time series with trend and seasonality? So I can actually, yes, uh, I can actually key in all this A, B, C, D for the choice. And then I take, you just click this date it will choose the correct answer for you. So you don't have to do the marking. Immediately after they answer, the computer will do the marking for you. And then you can also insert the diagram. So I insert this diagram to show them what is the meaning of with trend and seasonality. So if you want to add more questions, just now I have three questions. So I actually just do the same for the following part. So you repeat this, you can copy, paste, edit below also can. Then you just save and exit. So once you save and exit, let me see. Just now you are at the quiz here. So you save and exit, you will have this one pop up. Quiz ABW501C7. But you have not launched it yet. So the next one, I will move to the launch button. Here you have quizzes, right? So go to the launch button then. So once you go to the launch button, you click on this quiz, it will be enable your quiz. So the student will be able to start answering your quiz. So how they come to here, you just ask them type socrative.com and then key in this number, TEH7. Let's say your it will automatically come out there. So for my case, it's TEH7 something, 7317, 7317. So they just need to key in this password. They will be able to come into your quiz. Okay, let me see. I think there are some questions in the chat box. What is that? Uh, quiz report to the classes. Uh, yes, I share the quiz report to the classes. So I show them this page. Just now what you see here, I actually show them this page. Of course, I try to hide their information. You can choose whether to show their name or not, whether to show the percentage or not. You can actually choose this one. You can choose the percent, uh, the student percent mark, or you can choose it at the progress. Progress, meaning that let's say they already answer three questions, it will show 100% progress. If they answer two questions, it will show 67% progress. Okay, so you, you can choose whether you want to show them or not. For me, I will show them this one. But without their, maybe without their name or you can, you can hide their name. Okay. All right. So for this one, after you launch the quiz, they can answer and I will go to show the result page. So I click on the result page. That is what I see just now. So the ones that you see is actually in the result page. So if every week also you do this quiz, the student may feel that it's very stressful. So sometimes I change other assessment approach. So I may ask them to use the Mentimeter. Besides Socrative, I also like this Mentimeter very much. So I also use the Mentimeter. So they, you can do something like the uh, the word crowd. So what do you know about the current trend? So after they learn, they will type. And then what have you learned in the chapter eight? So they will type. So I will put in some keyword that I want, want it to uh, consider as correct. But this one have limitation. It can only capture three keywords, if not mistake. Okay. So for this one, it's like a game for them. Because this one is, uh, you see there's the leaderboard. So those who earn the higher point, they will they will come out to be the champion. So they really enjoy this one because it's like you are looking at many um, and I can play the music behind it. So this one is quite interesting also. Okay, let me see if there are something in the chat box. Yeah, Quizy also. Yeah, Quizy can be used. But I, I, I want to stick to a few so that I can be more familiar with it. 
come back to their home group. Okay, can can let me play the quick video. Okay, some of you are uh, request that play how to how to let me see how to home home video is it? How you create the breakout session for the student to come back to their home group? Okay, can just a quick one. It's very quick only. So let me play again the video how to create the home group for the break uh, for breakout session for the home group number seven. Okay, please allow me to play this one more time. Okay, so I asked them to stop the first session just now. I, I stopped this one and then I asked them to join back. When they join back, I can click the nine sessions that I want. So I manually create the assignment. So it's okay for them to join late. No problem. You see, when I create this, there are students who are still joining my session. So for number one, all the one will put together. Number two, all the group two will put together because this is their home group. So same number means same home group. When I say original group, I mean the home group. So just less than one minute, I already bring a five group members into their own group. Okay. okay. All right. So step number seven done. Eight, nine, ten also done. Let me see where are we now. Okay. So we are done with the 10 step for the uh, for the zigzag method. So this is what you can do in your class. Usually uh, we'll need one and a half hour if including the, the overdraw summary discussion. If only do this zigzag session without the discussing part, then maybe within one hour you can complete this. I usually estimate 30 minutes for my discussion of the summary at the beginning of the class. And then one hour for this activity for jigsaw. Okay, so what about reverse jigsaw? So let's see how the reverse jigsaw different from the jigsaw technique. It's slightly different in the reverse jigsaw technique. Students in the expert group teach the whole class rather than return to their own home group to teach the content. So it's a bigger picture of the jigsaw puzzle. So each of these expert group, they learn different segment of the topic. Then they will present. After this discussion, the expert group will send one representative to present to the whole class. Expert two, group two will present to the whole class. So they don't have to go back to their home group to explain to their own home group. So they discuss straightforward to their to the entire class. This one, I feel that it can save a lot of time because you skip one part already. You don't have to go back and discuss with your own home group. Okay. So the same thing, as Prof Karim mentioned earlier, you can use this jigsaw method to discuss in uh to discuss the uh how to say to discuss the large amount of content in the topic. So my practice is. I think there are some chatting in the chat box. Let me check. <coughs> yeah, from Dr. Farida there. Uh, yeah. You give specific learning material to cover for each member before your synchronous class. Uh, actually, I upload all the material to the e-learning portal. However, as I mentioned, they are working adult. So usually they will not... Uh, very, very few of them actually assess to the material before the classes. So that's why I have to do it during the live session. Okay. Uh, maybe I missed it. What is that? What, what do you From miss? Dr. Aizati. Uh, where is the question? How come I cannot see it? 
Uh, in I, I this one actually the question from from the YouTube uh, chat. Oh, okay. so, uh, yeah, I pasted that. Uh, when you do, do you do the debriefing to make sure the expert group got their test right before they teach their home group? Uh, no, that's why at the end, after they go back to their home group and teach their home group, after that only I do the debriefing. So I, I didn't do the debriefing during the expert group. Actually, remember, we have one leader in each of the expert group. So the leader should be able to lead the discussion and also are no better than their peer. But however, I find that their standard is more or less the same. So it's quite difficult to, to get them, uh, how to say, uh, to make sure that the, the answer or the information given are correct. So I did one uh, extra thing also, when I do this zigzag in my class, not the online version, I actually involve my postgraduate student. So I put my postgraduate student, master and PhD student into each of the expert group. So they will serve as the uh, moderator in the expert group. So they are like the real expert. So they can actually uh, give the debriefing sessions before they share go back and share with their home group. So that's why uh, we have to modify a bit also the, the zigzag. We cannot fully adopt it. We have to adapt it. Okay. I never knew this method, but I have done this in face-to-face -face group discussion before. Yes, so this is what happened to me as well. <laughs> okay. So for this one, for this one, discuss, uh, first I discussed the important summary point for the chapter. So if you can see my summary point for the whole chapter is only in two slides. So phase one until phase six. So this is the uh, data analytic life cycle. So of course I have the pre-recorded video for the comprehensive material uploaded into my e-learning portal. But again, because of the working adult, so they may not really go through all the material before the lesson. So I have to do the overview and discuss the important point for this. So I discuss all the six phases before I start to do the uh, reverse jigsaw activity. So the, this is the information, the large amount of contents of the topic about this uh, data analytic life cycle. So you can see I prepared this overview of the life cycle in 32 slides. So I give them this 32 slide of information for them to go through during their jigsaw activity. Then again, my practice is I like to use case study because for working adult, they want to know how to apply it in the real situation. So case study can show the application in the real situation. So in this case study, all the six phases are actually given already. How, how they use the six life cycle phases to solve the real world problem. So from this case study information, I give them this. And then I also do the six segment in the Microsoft Excel based on the case study. So the case study don't have this information. So the, the challenging part is I need to come up with the six phases on my own, and then I need to separate them into category like this. So I actually give them a structural way to do their learning. Because if you don't give this information, you will see they type in different, different sort of information. So if you do it this way, it's like a supervised learning. So you give them a template to answer. So they will fill up based on the template that you give it to them. So I said, I, I, how to say, I put the student into six, uh, I put the activity into six segments. So I have this phase one until phase number six. Okay. So you will say I have nine group of students, how I put them into these six phases. So what I did is some of the phases, you will see they are very, very long information need to fill out. For example, like phase one. So I asked group one to answer the first three columns. Group two, the expert group one, focus on the first three columns. The expert group two, focus on the last three columns. 
and the center information I fill up as an example for them. Okay, so this is how I did it. So sometimes one piece of information, one segment, you may partition them into two, uh, two sub-segments and give them to a different expert group. Okay. So you can see, uh, just now I just prepared this template. So you can see now they already key in all the information into the template given. So you see there are 40 over students enter to this page and they key in the information. So I have six different segments. So all the different uh, expert group, they will enter to their own segment and answer it accordingly. For example, this phase one, there are two expert group answer it simultaneously. So the first expert group focusing on these three columns, the second expert group focusing on these three columns. Okay, so uh, this is what I say just now. They insert this YouTube link inside, they insert the image inside there. Okay, and another interesting thing is when I do reverse zigzag, because I have more time, they don't need to go back and present to their home group. And remember, their learning speed is different. So some group, some expert group, very quickly, they already finished answer their part. So what I ask them to do is once you finish your part, you move on to the next phase or next other segment group, and you can type your answer there. So for, for example, this one, segment number five is actually un originally answered by group number eight. So the first five, uh, the first row here is filled up by group number eight. So when they fill up this, the group six already finished. So they already do uh, segment six, uh, sorry, group six, they already did their segment before this. So they come in here, they can type in their answer simultaneously. So whatever they see is not filled up by this group, they will continue and put it at the bottom. And group five also, they already done their part. They come in, they can type their answer at the bottom there. So if we do it this way, the different learning speed learner, if they do faster, then they will learn more. So they can move on and they can fill out other, other segments as well. So you can compile with different, different information from different groups. Okay. So once this is over, I will ask, it, uh, for each of this uh, segment, I will ask one representative to present it to the whole classes. So meaning that the expert group present to the entire classes. They don't have to go back and present to their home group member. Okay, so this can save time and the debriefing session is due uh, during their presentation. Okay, and the assessment is same like earlier. So I didn't show the assessment part here. So that's the reverse jigsaw, okay? So uh, some tips that uh, I share with you is uh, do this, ask the request the student to insert their home group number as prefix because this can facilitate the breakout session very efficiently. And you can also use the breakout session in host a session, schedule training. If you do this, the same group member will assign to the subsequent breakout session, okay? And then just now also, all this just now you guys already asked it. So two students can pair together and same, send to the same expert group so that they are more confident when they return to the home group. And I assign my postgraduate student as the moderator or real expert in each expert group so that we can ensure the student really become expert before they share the information to home group because we don't want them to share the wrong information to their home group. Okay, let me see. I think there are some questions there. I have two hour session, however, it's not consecutive. So I plan to do the first session for expert group discussion, the second session for home group session. Uh, okay, uh, I don't think there's any problem. You can do that, no problem. Okay, so uh, that's all my conclusion is the sudden shift of toward the remote learning has not been easy, but collaborative learning technique can help the student to feel involved and engaged. Online collaborative learning does not happen just spontaneously. So you can see the planning behind really take times and we need to use the right tools to make the learning smooth and simple. 
So I can say this jigsaw technique turned the remote learning into an opportunity for the student to communicate uh, for for us to communicate with the student and for students to communicate with their own classmates. Any negative feedback from the student? Uh, sometimes when they uh, how to say their network is not good, then they will suddenly uh, how to say stop and then go out so they don't know what happened and then they join back. Then when they join back, they need me to put them into their team. So maybe they need to wait for a while because I'm attending. I, I just now I floating from group to uh, from the breakout session to breakout session, right? So maybe they have to wait me for a while to finish the discussion. Then only I can put them back to their own group because they cannot uh, join back to the own to the breakout session on their own. So these are some of the feedback. Okay, uh, Prof. Harim, I think that's all from me. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dote. So maybe we can, I think we, you have answered all the questions uh, on the WebEx. Maybe there's another question on YouTube channel here, YouTube chat. Okay. How sure. do you manage, how do you manage free riders, students who don't do their part? Ah, the, if we do the jigsaw method, there are no free rider because mm -hmm. every member need to present to their yeah. own home group member. So they must involve, they must really know and learn. That's why you, you see, you can see they put many notes there to remind them how to teach their own home group. Yeah, that's why okay. the mm -hmm. title of this webinar, how to get, uh, how to use jigsaw to get everyone to get everyone without exception. So that there can be hardly any free riders because they have to do their part. They have to become the expert, uh, you know, uh, because they, when they go back to the home group, they, they, they are the one who should actually explain the, the subtopic that they're supposed to be an expert. So uh, therefore they have to be really, you know, involved and, and prepared, well prepared for the session. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Any any more questions? Um, you can type questions on the chat box, or you can unmute the microphone. Except those from YouTube, you can can put in the chat box. Um, uh, okay. <clears throat> any any questions? Um, if there's no question, I want to share a little bit a little bit more on. Uh, how I how I did my own jigsaw very briefly. Um, any other tools? Yeah, any other tools can be considered other than Google Sheet. So far, uh, I only explore Google Sheet. Uh, I don't know other tools. Mm -hmm. Except that the Prof Karim share one, but it, it, because the, uh, the <laughs> Prof Karim share is different expert group, they will use different approach that they prefer. So, and uh, it's quite difficult for me to monitor them. I, I don't know their speed. I have to get uh, assess group by group. So just now, if I put them together, it's easier for me to monitor their speed. I know who are slow, then I can attend to the slower groups. Okay, uh, if you have questions, uh, yeah, feel free to uh, ask the questions. Uh, but I just want to share very briefly, this is actually the workshop that I did with... Uh, Dr. T and, and others, what the T of them last week, uh, all lecturers. So basically the topic, the topic for the exercise was on climate change because climate change is a common topic that everyone can relate to. So these are the materials which I prepared in my Google Drive. And of course, the advantage of using Google Drive, or you can also use uh, Microsoft, uh, what not? It, not or oh, any 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 apa yang shareable punya ni lah. So I, I like using Google Drive. So this reading material that I shared with the participant or with the student in your case, uh, there's another reading material, the the reading material that they can use to to read uh, to become an expert in the subtopic that you assign to them. And I have a jigsaw task here and jigsaw worksheet. I have shared the link. In the chat box uh, in webex as well as on youtube yeah 
So feel free to download and use it, modify it uh, as you wish. Okay, this example of the jigsaw task that I uh, prepared. So I divide the students or the participant in this case. Uh, let, let's say, let's use the students uh, as our classroom scenario. So I divide them to groups. Then uh, I put a name, assign the name, assign the first students in the group. Then I will elect one moderator. So this moderator would moderate the discussion in the home group. Uh, when they come back to the home group and start the discussion, so the moderator will take care and will get someone also to, to, to check the time, everything. Then uh, I assign the subtopic. The main topic is climate change. Uh, that's a big topic. So you see here when we do when we do the jigsaw, we as the subject matter expert really need to look at the topic and see how we can break it up into subtopic. And I, the ID number would be, I think five in the group would be nice. So you have to divide the subtopic, the, the main topic into five subtopics like this, and then assign a student, each student in the group, in the home group. And then uh, I will give them the study material, instruction and study material. And they have to do this before the actual session. Uh, because I have two hours uh, session, but I don't want to take too much time uh, during the actual session. So I, I, I get them to study the material before the actual class. So using the flip classroom kind of concept. In fact, Jigsaw is, uh, and I would say, one of the ideal methods that we can use to support the flip classroom approach here. Yeah? So I give them the link to the study material and then uh, for the instruction here, what they need to do just in case, you know, uh, they are not clear. So they have to join the expert group and so on. Then uh, when they click the instruction and study material here, they will get this one. So here, instruction and study material for climate change. So there's a main topic is climate change. Then, uh, Make sure they are clear of the learning outcomes and the learning outcome is it can be also designed in such a way that they align to uh, the learning outcome for each subtopic and then uh, these are for the instruction here okay and then there's a down uh, they can download the worksheet so the worksheet just like the example shown by dr k just now in the home group when they have the discussion presentation by each expert uh, each subtopic, they will listen to it very carefully and they will make a notes for each of the subtopic here. And they have to pay attention and make good notes because later on they will do a quick assessment uh, using the quiz like uh, I, I also use uh, Socrative in this case. So they will study the material as you can see here. So for subtopic one, um, I give the I assign the reading material for them and the reading material uh, can be very specific for that particular subtopic. Of, of course, you can also provide the general reading material that cover all the five topics, all the five subtopics. But for, for, for the subtopic, maybe you want to find, you want to give them one or two very specific reading material so that they can focus because they, they will become an expert for that particular subtopic. But as Dr. Tate mentioned just now, uh, we need to give more guidance to the students. So I actually give them some focus point. So it is very guided, you know, uh, when they are reading the, um, the material or the reading material, uh, I want to make sure that they cover some of this point. So they can kind of uh, focus more on this particular point and these are we want them to cover when they present this uh, in the in the home group. We want to make sure these important essential points to be covered. Okay. So again, uh, if you do this for the first time, it's a lot of it's very time consuming because you really need to <laughs> to, to study the article itself uh, or to the subtopic, and you, you want to be very sure what are the specific point that you want the expert to cover in their each. Uh, the, in their own subtopic, you know, you, you don't want them to miss any important things here. And the same thing for subtopic two, subtopic three, subtopic four. And then um, 
for for each uh, material yeah they can just click and they can uh, read or download uh, the material to their computer then they can start to uh, study the material then the, the jigsaw sheet when during the home home group uh, sharing they can use this to take notes and then after that uh, a quick assessment so again uh, my my uh, all time favorite is Socrative, and this is an example again. Last last week that we did <laughs> in this group, uh, but there are too many questions. Uh, maybe yeah, I would say three to five questions would do. But make sure the the questions are designed to to test those important essential aspects of each of the subtopic. So we want to ensure that yeah, they covered all the ground. And we can also let them to do more or expanded version of the quiz as a revision. So you can actually give them after the after the session and give them ample time to go through uh, the questions and answer the questions so that they can go deeper uh, into this. So as you can see, uh, designing Jigsaw for online delivery can be quite overwhelming uh, the first time, the first time. Uh, but I think if you do this again next semester or next year, it will be very, very easy for you. You just need to refine uh, if you need, uh, if necessary, you just need to refine it further and make it better or find a better reference and, uh, for, for the students. But uh, I think uh, Jigsaw is one of the, I, I would say, methods that we should promote and all lecturers should try, should try to do uh, in their own classroom to this is a real engagement where everyone has to play their role. Everyone has to play their, their role. Okay. Um, so it's already 30. Maybe let me just share a few things. Uh, so the best way to learn is to teach. And to teach is to learn twice. So peer teaching, teaching each other. I believe this is a very effective way of you know learning because in order to teach the students uh really need to be expert and understand the subject and they can explain it in the simplest possible way within the short time given i think from our own experience as a lecturer before you step into the classroom and teach the subject teach the topic confidently we have to really understand the subject right the same thing here in peer uh, in jigsaw method that's the idea of expert just now yeah we have to become the expert so uh, I think this one uh, they has explained just now. Uh, one of uh, I find that the expert group when when they uh, they when they explain the subtopic in the expert group or in the home group, uh, you know some students are quite uh, very creative. But this one from our exercise last week, uh, they use a, a mind map uh, to capture the point and explain in the group using using the mind map. So. Actually, this is where we can see the creativity of, of the students. And in fact, when if we have rubric to give marks for this activity, the creativity would be one of the aspects that we want to look for. Uh, some of them using uh, this kind of uh, infographic. Uh, this is from our workshop last year. Some of some of you were here uh, in this in this uh, webinar today. Uh, so these are the things that we are looking for. You know, let the students to unleash their creativity. The opportunity for them, you, you, you tell the students, this is really the opportunity for them to be really creative, how you want to present the material within the short time given, in the best possible way, in the most, you know, uh, with clear explanation that, that the uh, members in the home group can understand, yeah? And, uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, that's about all. Uh, the basic points, uh, I think we have covered, Dr. Tay has really covered all the grounds on, on Jigsaw. Uh, I hope you you have well, you have got a very clear idea how to do Jigsaw online. And in fact, if we do it in face-to-face, -face, maybe we can use some of, of these elements also and, you know, to, to adopt some of these elements and adapt it in the face-to-face -face, uh, environment uh, as well. So any more, uh, let me just unshare this one and see whether we have any more questions. Uh, Dr. Tay, you want to add on uh, a few more uh, points here? 
Uh, I think I already covered everything. I already covered I, it. I, so, I answered okay. it also. So. Yeah. Let me see from YouTube, uh, from yeah, for, for class of, yeah, there's uh, one question uh, for a class of 100 students do you recommend doing a jigsaw in two separate sessions 100 classes no problem you can you can do it in separate session because like my class 45 student is about 50 already so if you want to separate them for easy monitoring then you can separate into two classes actually for my class i have 43 students so I like another two students to, to make it complete. That's why I also invite my postgraduate student to come in, two postgraduate students to come in so that I have 45 students so that each of them can learn the different section. So usually my postgraduate students are very uh, helpful. So they will join my class to help out. Yeah, uh, in my case, uh, I have co, uh, there are two lecturers teaching this course. So when I do the, Jigsaw, I actually invited my co-lecturer to join me and help me uh, to monitor the discussion in the expert group and also in the home group because we have, uh, I have six home groups, six or seven home groups in my course. Uh, so I, I want to make sure that the discussion in each group is you know, being, uh, being done properly, they are discussing, you know, they are teaching, the expert is teaching the, the, the right thing. <laughs> bukan, aj bukan ajaran sesat, kita panggil, ya? Eh? Bukan ajaran sesat. So, actually, if you have experts in the form of, like, your PhD students or master student, and they can give you, a, you know, a helping hand, that would be ideal. Because we want to make sure that every group is doing the right thing, all the discussion, uh, discussing the, the, the you know, accurate uh, points, uh, that uh, accurate information, uh, so that there's no misconception and, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yeah, finally, uh, yeah, uh, actually, I did get some negative feedback, actually, the day from my <laughs> students recently to my, to my, to my uh, disappointment. Uh, they said um, they they have to do uh, they they have to do more work, uh, but it's only one or two. Yeah, um, out of seven, about out of sixty, uh, I have about 56, 56, 57 students. One or two say that it's they they, they feel a bit overwhelming because they have to read a lot. Uh, uh, they have to read a lot, but actually, uh, I don't know. Uh, I have to, I have to really take the, the the comment and think about it. But majority say that they like it. Then that's really very engaging, and they learn a lot. Uh, and they, you know, they have the opportunity to engage more with the topic and and so on. So I do find that in my case, uh, I have one or two students say that it's too much. Uh, I mean, they have to read a lot, but actually they only need to read only one subtopic. So sometimes uh, I feel the, the student nowadays. <laughs> but of course, I have to, I have to be, uh, I have to explain again to them the rationale. So we need to be very patient uh, because we will face this kind of feedback from, from the students, you know. It can be very, quite, quite disappointing sometimes uh, because you, your intention, you have all the good intention to do your best. But sometimes the student uh, feel that is too much for them, you know. Uh, well, <laughs> right. no one way that can shit or, or every student. That's why maybe we have to try different different way in different yeah. lecture, yeah, you know, different classes. So I have done only twice the the jigsaw the, the semester, and I think that will be enough for them because I have I also do other things. Um, uh, STEM, a mixed bag of things to do, uh, but uh, I, I think we need to be to be very strong here because you need to be you spend a lot of time investment here uh, for, yeah. for the first time, and then you might not get all the positive feedback sometimes from the students. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Teh. It has been very, very, very uh, uh, useful. Uh, I learned, I learn also about the reverse jigsaw just now, so I, mean, I want to explore more on that. 
Um, and for every one of you who stay on until now and also on YouTube, thank you so much. I hope uh, we have given you value for your time and your precious time. And I hope you can look at this again, watch the recording on YouTube and maybe start to at least try once before end of the semester if you are teaching this semester. Give it a try, give it a try. Uh, and, and give us a feedback also, how the students respond and, and so on, I want to know also. <laughs> okay. So, terima kasih semua. Uh, terima kasih Dr. Teh and uh, have a nice day everyone. Assalamualaikum. Warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thanks Dr. Teh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Semua prep to call it partial jigsaw. Ah, ada juga ada tu. Okay, tak apa. Dr. Debra kata. Debra ni. Dia, 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 management eh? Ah, I don't know. There, there are many machines. So, yeah. yeah. It's more appropriate to call it partial jigsaw. <laughs> so, okay. The, the name is not important. What we do, what we did, what we actually do is probably more important. Uh, uh, we can call it also partial jigsaw, yeah. All right, so thank you. Okay, bye-bye.